Now I'm starting this project with this monster slab of beach, which I've left over from when I made my bench. I placed the slab on this section of laminate which I took the time to get perfectly level with the floor. And I secure it in place with a few wedges and a couple dabs of hot glue. By doing this, it means that when I move on to the next stage, I'll be able to keep the board perfectly flat and level. Speaking of which, it's a real, real pity that I just published a video on unusual uses for the crosscut, because this definitely would have qualified. Now because my slab is running along a completely flat piece of laminate, and I have my blade set to the lowest point on the slab, by taking literally hundreds of passes, I'm able to get the entire surface down perfectly level. It leaves an awful surface finish, but completely level. And once I have one side flattened, I can pop it off those wedges, flip it over, and start to level the other side. This slab is a bit of a beast, so my saw wasn't able to reach fully across and I was left with about 2 inches on one side that wasn't flattened. And all I had to do was flip it around and take a quick pass to level it all out. I can then come in with a couple hand planes just to smooth everything off and remove the tracks left over from the saw blade before trimming everything to its final dimensions with a circular saw and a straight edge. What you see me doing here is prepping the two boards that are going to become the top of this coffee table. So I remove as much waste as possible with the table saw before finishing it off with the electric planer and then jointing one edge of both boards with my hand planes before glue up. And yes, this is the most ghetto glue up there has ever been. But when you only have one long clamp, you make do. Now, to be honest, flattening the slab with the crosscut saw was more of a proof of concept, whereas this is the more traditional approach. So here you can see I made a quick sled for my router, which runs along these two parallel fences, and this allows me to move the router back and forward and bring the tabletop all down to one plane. Oh, and did I mention how dusty this was? Just like with the table leg, I used a circular saw and a straight edge to rip the board to its finished dimensions before moving on to the dovetails. Now, I've thought of new dovetails. I mean, I've done big ones, done small ones, wide ones, narrow ones, inlaid ones, half blinds. Thought I'd seen it all. Boy, was I wrong. I've just been playing before. Now these are what you call proper dovetails. You just saw me come in with my Japanese saw, cut down both sides of the tails, drill out the majority of the waste with a large auger bit, and now I'm just chipping out the remainder with a chisel. Here I'm transferring my lines from the tabletop to the leg so that when I cut out the pins, the two of them will match up perfectly. So yeah, this beach that the leg is made out of is incredibly hard, so 
made for a lot of chiseling. Here I'm going for the first test fit of this absolute monster of a joint. And no, that uh, incredibly ominous creaking noise never worried me at all. Yeah, r And only now do we get on to the actual difficult part of this build, which is the two matching family crests that have to be inlaid into the tabletop. So I start by cutting out all the individual pieces that make up the overall inlay. And I'm using a combination of oak, beech, mahogany and walnut, as well as a few more unorthodox materials, but I'll get to those a little later. Now I use pretty much the same process for inlaying all the bits. I stick it down with some double sided tape and mark all the way around the perimeter with my knife, which gives me an exact line that I can come in with a couple of different router bits and remove all that waste. Then I simply place the piece in and wail on it with a hammer. Clean up with a bit of water, which swells up any little gaps that might be present. And then just rinse and repeat for the over a hundred pieces that make up the two family crests. In a few places I thought a bit of assembly before inlay would be easier, like with these little checkered spheres that you see me inlaying here. The two central shields were another place where I just thought it was easier to make it before I inlaid it. And here you see me sticking on just a thin strip of walnut around this one as a sort of edge banding effect. Now, because the two shields are a little bit bigger than the, all the other pieces, they required a little bit more encouragement to go in. Forceful, hammer-based encouragement. And now, for some of the unorthodox materials we mentioned earlier. I could not get my hands on any wood white enough for an actual swan. So I'm using this trick of all-purpose filler, which I'll strengthen later. And the poor swan has an arrow right through him. So I'm using a, a thin section of copper wire and this tiny scrap of aluminium as the arrowhead. Now, just by itself, the filler isn't very durable. So it needs to be reinforced. And by pouring on superglue and letting it soak into all the pores, it becomes as strong as the superglue itself. And many, many hours later, the crests were done. When I started this build, I knew that the table leg had a few cracks and minor defects that would have to be dealt with. And the majority of them I filled with epoxies, you can see here. But for this one at the base of the leg, I thought a bow tie in walnut would look quite well and be perfectly strong enough to hold together that little split. Also, I really like bow ties, as my channel thumbnail might suggest. So the last major component of this coffee table is the two legs. And the person that this table was going to didn't really mind and left it up to me. I thought it might be fun to try a bit of turning. I started with this paper template 
which gave me the overall outline of the shape I wanted. And then I could start turning down the blanks into a rough cylinder. Now because I had that template, I was able to mark a bunch of different intervals down the length of the leg and turn it to the right thickness. And then all I had to do was remove the bits in the middle and it would have a nice consistent taper. Because this was only my second time ever using the lathe, my turning skills left a little bit to be desired. But I found the rigorous application of sandpaper does an awful lot to cover up your mistakes. These two legs are not coming down straight from the tabletop, but instead are tilted off at about a 10 degree angle in two directions. Which means I had to get a little bit creative with my drill press setup. So I can tilt the table 10 degrees, but then just had to raise up the other end on a stick to approximate the 10 degrees in that direction. And amazingly, this actually worked. Here you see me cutting the slots that will accept the wedges that will keep these two legs secured in place. I'm having them extend through the tabletop and then wedge them in a sort of cross-shaped pattern to get this kind of cool exposed X shape, I guess. So once the glue had dried on the two legs, I was able to come back in with my Japanese saw and just trim off the excess and you get, you start to get an idea of that X pattern I was talking about and how it looks in the overall piece. I left the two turned legs a little bit long so that afterwards I could level up the table and come back in with my pencil and mark the correct height off the ground at which the legs needed to be cut. Remember before when I was gluing up the tabletop and I said it was the most ghetto glue up there had or ever would be? Yeah, I was wrong. This is. This definitely is. I seriously need to invest in some longer clamps. One of the final things to do before applying finish is to come back in with this little wood burning tool and add some of the feature lines to the wreaths and leaves on the outside as well as the two family surnames on the banner at the bottom. Now I got someone I know to spray the table so I don't actually have any footage of the finish going on but basically it got five coats of water based varnish with a light sanding in between. And then finally, finally, it was ready to be wrapped up and shipped off. For anyone who actually made it this far, thanks for sticking it out. I know this was a really long one, but there was just so much to try to get into the video. Anyway, really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider sharing it, and maybe even clicking that subscribe button. It really does mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching.